1340-96.5 KVGC. On the phone with me today, Douglas Viviani of Everything Old is New Again. Tonight, he and David Cohen host uh, the show that every week examines our pop culture, where it came from, why it's still popular, and as we always say, these two guys, like like Justin Timberlake bringing sexy back, you guys, not quite there yet, but you are bringing fun back to radio. How's that? There we go. Now, if we could bring sexy fun to the radio and have it made. <laughs> I'd watch that show. <laughs> How are you doing? I, we're, we're getting ready to go as a family to see... Uh, I never thought I would do this, because when I was in high school, did you go to the local plays and watch the local plays, by the way? When I was in high school, no. But my son, Jake, was in a number of performances and actually had not the lead but the second role in the movie you or the uh, the play you are going to see into the woods oh really yes Which one was he the, oh the the father figure yeah, yeah. okay yeah it, it, it was into the woods which we saw t- actually two weeks ago and because there's a lot of high schools around here you know yeah. and then there's um there's another one we're going to this weekend hairspray at the high school that our kids will eventually be going to so it's it's a nice little option. It's something that I never considered till I had kids. Because when you're in high school, sometimes you're like, ah, oh, I'm not into it or right, whatever. Right, right. And uh, but they're they're pretty good uh, these performances. And for a nine and a six year old that we're bringing to, instead of going to Broadway or you know these these very expensive theaters. Um, they're sort of getting into it at a young age. I think it's kind of cool. I don't know. Did we, you do? That's another question. Did you do any of this when you were a young uh, child? I, I'll, say, I'll, right? did, no, well, Douglas, I'll make a confession. I did not appreciate. I was a jock in high school. I did not appreciate the theater or the arts until I got into college. And now both my wife and I are very. Uh, big proponents of the arts, both our sons, uh, both Jake and, and, and Joey, JD, not so much, but Jake and Joey. Uh, in fact, Joey, my son that graduates in uh, in May from UOP, is, has the lead in uh, Brigadoon uh, that, that will actually be uh, next weekend. It, wow. uh, it runs for three, three days next weekend at UOP. Um, and we became very big supporters and still are big supporters of the arts. And I kicked myself in the ass, and I'll say that yeah. right now. I kicked myself in the ass going, just, what did I miss? Look what right. I missed. I love this. I, exactly. I, I act every single day. I mean, I am, you know what I'm saying? Yes. I, I'm that, on... That's the thing. Like, I, I, on the other hand, the same thing as a kid, loved it, uh, loved the theater, you know, stuff. My dad used to bring us to the high school. They brought on, these are old names, you're not going to remember if you don't remember, but there was a traveling show, fundraising show, with Georgie Jessel, um, <laughs> Henny Youngman, uh, J. Fred Muggs. I swear I must have been seven or eight. I remember doing that with my family, and we had such a kick. It was really like a variety show. <laughs> that wasn't... Uh, professionals. Wasn't J. Fred Muggs, wasn't he a, a monkey? Yes, was he was the monkey that was on the Today Show yeah. in the 50s. and He traveled with this troop. And was, but I'm just saying, like, I, it, it was cool. And I was totally into the sports, too. So it was all sports, very little theater beyond what I just mentioned there as I got older. Um, and then I got into the music, and we used to play at all the uh, functions, the Battle of the Bands, sure, all the different sure. events. And uh, and enjoyed performing that way, but it really is something that I think now you can, you know we have these a lot of these local theaters have arisen on Main Street where it is a you know a, a Broadway style of almost that quality theater where they also have a children's program um, where you could sign your children up if they don't make the play in for college or high school I should say or even junior high. Um, you can have them perform in a in a local play for a couple dollars. They they learn how to do it, how to perform, yeah. and there's there's a lot of those around. So I don't know. It, it seems to be a lot more popular than it was, or at least it's more available to the kids now. And of course, kids have so many more options. But as a, I'm just saying, as opposed to looking at that computer screen or the tele telephone or whatever, playing video games, there's a lot more to do, and I think that's kind of that's kind of well, cool. And, and, and yeah, and, and let's just say too that you know, at one time, all there was were was little league or soccer, 
And actually, you know, Little League. There was nothing but Little League. And then Correct. soccer came along. And then Saturday basketball for kids came along. And then, you know, uh, other type events. And now, you know, gymnastics and dancing and, and so forth. But now we have other arts, too. And, and they're, here in our area, we also have, um, we also have uh, youth orchestras and symphonies. Oh, wow, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a pretty good idea, too. Yeah, like, it, it, it's, it, I, I'm just postulating, have we broken down the wall of this, quote, nerd being such a, you know, not-so-nice term? Because the nerds were the ones in the plays, right? The nerds are the ones doing the instruments. But now all kids are kind of at least exposed to it, and I don't think it's frowned upon. I, I know it's not frowned upon on this end. Um, so I think it's kind of good that the doors are opening to lots of other things. Uh, but how are our athletes? <laughs> well, Have we lost the athletes to these? Um, back in the back in the day, back in the day at Jackson High School, uh, when Wes Hill was the band director, if you were not in the band, you were a nerd. Everybody was in the band, from athletes. Everybody was in the band, and if you weren't in the band. Those were the guys that were. Wow, well, so it's all this peer pressure. It's all like it, what kids think and what you know is in. I guess well, right. What parents? You know, do, do your parents value music? Do your parents value the arts? Um, not that my parents didn't, but I don't think we had much back in those days. Right. I don't. I, mean, I look at Leo. Leo went loved this into the woods two weeks ago. And we started talking about it. He started singing the songs afterwards. He remembers, like, and Leo, would you like to act? And he clearly, for whatever reason, he's tried it, is not into acting, but I told him about all the stuff, stage managing and yeah, lighting yeah. and sound and all this. And he's fascinated by the lighting. So all of a sudden, at six years old, who knows what he's going to do, but at least he's exposed to an option of doing something that I would never have thought of, didn't even know existed. And at six, he's ex- at least exposed to these things, you know? Well, that brings us, speaking of exposed, yeah. that brings us to our next topic. I just made my last uh, college tuition payment. Uh, tuition to UOP has gone up to 63000 a oh. year. Wow. Started in the 50s. Does that uh, include uh, room board st- or no? Uh, that, that's everything. You okay. know, I mean, it, it's like 50-something, but, you know, they... If if you look at it, if if you were to go online right now and say what's college, it will say yearly tradition, you know everything included. But that has you know your your health uh, benefits. We don't have health benefits for Joey. He doesn't live on campus, so we don't have that. He doesn't have a meal ticket, so he doesn't have that. So we're not paying sixty three. But right. if you're a freshman entering students in the UOP, you have to live on you know you have to live there, and you have to so you have to eat there, and you have to have so it's sixty three grand. A year to go Unreal. there. That's you know, two hundred fifty thousand dollars for an education for the college education. Yeah. Now, yeah. I of course, you know, I'm a lawyer. I went all the way through to law school, so I'm not putting college down when I say this. But do are and I'm not unique in saying this now these days. We're hearing this more and more. Is the my niece is going to University of Scranton? The other one's going to uh, Villanova. Same course as you. You're talking about. And uh, the question is, is it, in a sentence, is it worth it? You know? Okay, like, so it, it's amazing. We were able to do we were able to to do Joey without any student loans. Okay, so we were able to put him through. We had made you know we'd made some college investments and taking you know there was yeah. you know uh, and there were some tight times in here. But I mean honestly, we didn't spend that much money. He had he had grants and he had you know, scholarships and so forth. So it wasn't, right. you know, I, I don't know of anybody really these days that pays the exact full boat. Do you? That's another great uh, point because you can, you can pit colleges against each other yeah. and say, you know, yeah. to the out-of-state college or the not-state school, hey, you know, I could go to the state school for a lot less and then they, they, they want you as a student, so what, they'll offer you the, the scholarship or a half scholarship or whatever it might be for academics yeah. and so forth and and uh you know or or you could be a member of the rowing team exactly. oh wait that that gets you in trouble doesn't it <laughs> well it depends if you're really really on the rowing team what, what? my you're, question you're is we've seen all of that 
there's 800 students that are caught. Are there other people that have done this? That I mean, is this rampant now, this business of and you're, maybe they get into college? And your homegirl here, your homegirl, Lori, she, she graduated oh. from high school just down the road from you, didn't she? Yes. And she's tied up into one of these things. Gra- Lori Laughlin graduated from High School, which is literally... And Becky, and Becky, how could you do this? <laughs> yeah. I don't, you know, and, and, and I don't, this is such a unique area of law. I've, I'm not that well versed in it in terms of Boy. how significant this is going to be, but she had a million dollar bond, which tells yes. me that there's a possibility of some jail time for her, or this is going to be a significant issue for her and, the, and these parents, although I hear they're going to go easier on the parents uh, in the scuttlebutt, but I don't believe that in, in that this is different. Usually in this case, you would get some of the, Lower people, let's say one of the two parents, let's say, or one of the one of the forty parents that got involved with this, to to give up the bigger person that that ran oh. the scheme. And here they they got the bigger person that the two top people that ran the scheme. He's got they've got the federal government has got them ratting out on all the parents. So the theory is different. So I'm wondering if there are going to be hard on the parents because. You know, they've already plea bargained out the wrongdoers, the main wrongdoers. Oh. So it's it's, it's going to be interesting. And, and again, I think Felicity, uh, I think, was $250,000 uh, bond. Uh, Lori Laughlin was a million dollars. I yeah. wonder what these other parents are going to be. It, 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 the bond number depends, you know, kind of gives you an indication of whether there's going to be jail time or not. Because yeah. when it's that high a number, that's what R. Kelly got for a... Uh, <laughs> Bond. Yeah, seriously. Yeah, no, 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 no. She no. might be looking at jail time. I, mean, I wouldn't yeah. doubt it. There's an episode of Full House where Jesse tries to get the twins into a special arts school while they're little, you know, still babies, because he thinks they're musically talented, and he tries to bribe their way in, and that that's gone viral on the internet. Have you oh, seen oh, it? Oh, yes. no. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I'm just confused as to like, I'm not putting college down. I'm not, but it's it's almost no. like high school in the fifties. Like everyone's going, everyone sh- deserves it, everyone should go. But on the other hand, you know, yeah. what was no. what was so hard of getting these kids to study and or go to the school uh, that matches their personality and their drive? I mean, this I, I this think girl the, you see on the the YouTube, she didn't even want to go. She no. wanted to go for the party. Yeah. I think the worst thing that a parent can do is when you're, you know, at a stoplight and you see um, a lineman or construction guys working, and you and you say to Leo or or or, or even your daughter, "Hey, <laughs> stay in school. Don't become like those guys right there." Right. That's the worst what? thing you can say. Absolutely. Guess what? My plumber and my electrician that work around the house bill here, more than you do, huh? No <laughs> doubt. <laughs> And most of it's cash. Yeah. I'm telling you, if Leo has an in- in- or Angelica has an interest in either of those or any of the you know trades, it's now a significant consideration. And I talk yeah. to these guys, and they cannot find co-workers. They're having a t- at least here in the Northeast, they're having a tough time yeah. getting like my air conditioner guy, and the I guess it's the heat slash air conditioning. He's working during this winter time till twelve at night, almost every night. Because he's running the company, he cannot find, uh, I guess they call them mechanics, of an air conditioner or heating unit to help him work and get this done. And he makes a, a good yeah. a good number. We have the same thing here in, in uh, California. We're running into a thing in California where unemployment the unemployment rate is so low, it's hard to find people to fill jobs. Uh, you gotta, we're going to blame that on Trump, too, now, right? <laughs> <laughs> hey, what? Moving, moving right along. What's up with this week's show? Well, I'll tell you, uh, it's interesting. Time is flying, and we're talking about colleges and how the kids grow up quickly and so forth. Well, everything old is new again has grown up, and is five years old this April, and we're at now to this weekend at our two hundred and fiftieth show. Wow. So we're going to do a celebration of our show and more specifically, which we've never done before, really define and take a look at some kind of, uh, what would you say, genres of entertainment, movie, televisions, and so forth, and see what actually do we mean when we say everything old is new again? What are we, what are we looking for when you look at a past or a prior project uh, that has developed into something that's 
that's popular again now. Has it been successful? Why? And what about the ones that are not successful that are remakes and things like that? And why did they hit and why did they miss? So we're just going to take a look and see some examples of, of everything old is new again. And what are we talking about? What's this show all about anyway? This week will be a scoping session to maybe revisit your mission statement and come up with uh, a new direction for the show. It will visit the mission statement and expand upon it, but a uh, new direction, mm, I don't think so. I can't come up with any other ideas. <laughs> well, don't. Don't change it. How long okay. How long have we been with you? How many sh- so when now, did we come you're in? You're with us. We started in April. I'm pretty sure August or so would be our fifth. Uh, I have to look it up because it, it, we have about 160 interviews. I'll put it that way. Uh-huh. And, and how long have... How long have has KVGC been running Everything Old is New again? Four and a half years at least. Four and a half years. So we were one of the first. More than that. A little more than that, yeah. So, weren't we the first, weren't we the first were, station on the West Coast? You were the f- first or second, I'm pretty sure it was the second on the West Coast. Uh, affiliate to sign up uh, Everything Old is New again. We're yeah. eternally grateful for that because once the ball gets rolling, you know. There we go. Uh, we need somebody to take a chance, and there it is. Tonight at 6 o'clock, tomorrow night at 6 o'clock, Douglas and David, everything old is new again. Hey, let's do it for another five years, okay? At least, at least. Happy St. Patrick's Day.